talk about the side effects of being stuck indoors. A Twitch streamer that gets struck by lightning midstream. And what video rabbit hole did Dan fall down this time? All this and more on this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. Get me out of this house! Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. We are good for your ears. I'm Dan, and you can find me everywhere at RFS Dan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me at Gone to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs Vlogs, and always laughing at the intro to the podcast for some reason. <laughs> yes, that thing has amused <laughs> you since episode one, pretty much. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> it just does. So, in my quest to not go stir crazy, being an extrovert stuck in an introvert's house here, right. I decided to move all my equipment, my tower, my dual monitors, my microphone, everything to the couch area. Well, you know, and I know it's only like literally five feet away, <laughs> and it's for it's for good reasons. One, the airflow is better here. There's no airflow just five feet away. There's no airflow because the couch is blocking my desk. So I just melt in that corner where I do dantics. Oh, right. Yeah. And two, it feels like I'm just somewhere different in a different chair, in a different seat, facing a different direction, just to change it up. I guess. Isn't that crazy? How just a little change like makes everything feel so new. It does, and I can only do it on certain days. Like, I can't do it on Wednesdays. We have the live stream. I can't do it on Saturdays because we have Dantic. So, like, on Sundays to, like, Wednesdays, I'm starting to move my computer from one area to the next just to just to change it up. The next move would be outside if it wasn't so dang hot and the traffic wasn't so dang loud. I have always wanted to have, like, an area where I could take my laptop out into the backyard while I'm out there with the dogs and actually have, like, a little desk and stuff. I have thought about it so many times. Like, Jamie and I have been talking about getting a shed, and he kind of said that. He's like, we could get that shed, and you could build a little overhang, and we could put a little table there. And I'm like, that sounds so fun to me. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, crossing nature with technology doesn't always work out. Yeah, not not always. Not always. Yeah, I would. But do that. I mean, it would it would be fun, and I mean, and like you know, you moved your computer five feet. I'm moving my computer to another room again. Oh, that's right. Into back into the <laughs> living room. No, into the other office. Oh yes, how's that going? Uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I still don't know. Like uh, those of you that watch the vlogs, Jamie built us a desk. I don't. This was like six years ago now, and it's a huge desk, L-shaped desk that we both used to sit at. Well, now, when Oakley got sick, one of the dogs. When one of the dogs got sick, I started sitting in the living room. So then I became addicted to sitting in the living room because the TV was there and I could see outside, and I just wanted to be in there. But I don't. I'm not very productive in there, believe it or not. So then we decided to turn the spare bedroom into my office and move the spare bed downstairs, which doesn't work. It just it just doesn't work. Although I really do like this room. So now Jamie moved his computer downstairs so he can play pool when he wants to play pool. You know, he's got like his little man cave downstairs. Uh So now the other office has been empty for since you were here. So what is it like a month over a month? Yeah, it's been a couple months. It's been empty, completely empty. So he, he, you know, he's been downstairs for a while. He kind of said, he's like, I really like being downstairs. There's a door I can go right outside, you know, blah, 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 blah. So now I'm going to move into the big office with that big giant desk. He's going to get me a TV, so I'll be able to have a TV in there so I can watch TV, which I can't do in here. Not watch TV, but have it on while I'm working. You know how that goes. Oh, yeah. Um, And I'm going to move everything back in there, but I still don't know how I want to lay it out, and I still don't want to use my desktop because I don't know why, because I have this really cool desktop and I just don't use it. So it's a process. But I thought it was so funny. I'm like, I have to be the most indecisive person on the planet. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I I really think it has more to do with what you said. I'm an extrovert living in an introverted pandemic right now, and I can't handle it. Everything needs to change. Everything needs to be different. I walked out in the living room the other day, and I don't think I told you this. I asked Jamie if we could rearrange the living room. I'm like, can we put the couch in front of the window? And he goes, why do you want the couch in front of the window? I'm like, I don't know, because like the dogs like to look out the window, and it'll give them a better vantage point. And I have no idea. I just don't like the way the living room is laid out. He's like, there's no other way this living room works. And I'm like, can I just can we just like get new furniture? And he laughed at me, and he goes, your couch is brand new. I'm like, I, you know... Sorry, I'm just bored. And I'm not bored with, like, I have stuff to do. I'm bored with, like you said, we haven't gone anywhere. We haven't done anything. I need 
I need outside. <laughs> yes, I feel like I'm on lockdown, and there's nothing to yes. get excited about. There's no commercials of like come here and go there, you know. Especially yes. out here in California, when we're getting put back in the box for a while. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I don't know what to do. It's not like I'm a naturey type of person, so it's not like I can like go hike and like that satisfies my need. I'm a technology person. I need an arcade. Right. <laughs> I need to go out to the arcade or to the pizza place or something. Something to the mm. movies. I miss the movie theaters. Right. I miss camping. And we're, we're allowed to go camping again, but it's just too warm. Like, we don't normally camp this time of the year yes. anyway. But I'm, right. I missed out on it in the beginning part of the year. So now I have to wait till we're able to, you know, probably about middle of next month, we should be able to start doing that again. But yeah, like, I need out, I need out of my house. I need to go spend the night somewhere that's not here. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> we're, it's, it's the middle of the hundred plus degree weather for the next few weeks out here. So Ugh. there's nothing to do really outside anyway. Right, right. Oh, wow. Ugh. That was, that was five minutes of us just unleashing on all you guys. It's time for you to listen to our problems. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't think we've really talked a whole because everybody's going through it. And I think this is a topic that's a good thing to talk about because everybody is going through this in one way or another right now. And I think it's becoming more, I don't know if normal, which is scary. This should not feel, this should not be the normal thing. But I think it's becoming more and more normal for people to talk about the, the things that they're dealing with when it comes to COVID because it's helping them work through it. And like, even, you know, like when you and I talk about it, it makes me feel better. Like, at least I get it out. So, right. yeah, we're yeah. venting to mm -hmm. you guys. This is how we really feel. Oh, yeah, I'll keep it going. <laughs> I have no sleep schedule. I have no concept of times <laughs> or dates at all. It is crazy. I'm up till 2, 3 in the morning. I'm I'm yeah. sleeping for hours on the couch during the heat. It's, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Here, let's talk about more craziness. So, the other night, <laughs> I I noticed – well, I didn't notice, but – it was time to switch the faucet outside. Oh, the, boy. Yeah. It was time to switch the faucet outside where the hose plugs into. What do you call that? The on and off switch, the on and off lever, the the, the, the water. The shut off? Spigot. Yes, yes. Just just where the water comes out of the hose. So right there where it meets uh, where it meets the pipe, it's leaking. So I'm like, okay, no problem. I'm going to run over to Lowe's. I'm going to grab this little $5 piece with a valve on it. It looks like the piece from Waterworks from Monopoly. It's like the little, yeah, it's just yeah. a little valve thing there. It's I'm called take, a spigot. Oh, you you just had the shut off the shut off valve, not the spigot. Uh, it's it's like it's like a helicopter blade, and I turn it, and it turns on the water to the hose, and when I turn it off, it okay, turns off the yep. water, and it's built. It's part of the house. Yes. So yes. that piece is like six inches, five inches long, and then it goes into a pipe. So I'm like, I'm just gonna unscrew it. I'm gonna screw it in. I got a little bug spray because oh my gosh, it's Joe's apartment here. It's just bugs everywhere. It's full on, you know, it's full on summertime, right? So all the right. bugs are everywhere. So I go to the store. I get the bug spray. It's hard to get the bug spray because everybody's standing there looking at the bug spray with their masks on. So I run <laughs> over there. I grab the bug spray. I grab the thing. It's like eight o'clock at night because you can't do anything before this. So it's eight o'clock at night. It's just starting right. to get dark. I go in the backyard with my. I don't know, my tools, I don't know what they're called. They're like some Mario tools. So <laughs> I, I, I think anybody listening right now that has ever dealt with those tools right now is going, don't do it, Dan. Don't do it. I told myself, <laughs> everybody, I told myself. I was like, Dan, this is like, stay in your lane. This is not what you do. Don't do it. <laughs> And, well, and, I, and I weigh the options. So one of me pops up on my shoulder and it's like, well, this is the best case scenario, Dan. Let's think positive. I'm like, okay, I'm, I, I can do this. I'm a, I'm a grown adult. I can do this. Well, the best case scenario is you go out there, you grab the pliers, you twist counterclockwise and it comes out, right? And you screw the next one in. You're done in a few minutes. You spray for bugs. You go inside. You have a beer. You watch Twitch live streams. I'm like, perfect. Right. Worst case scenario and probably the, what's going to happen here because you know you live in the money pit because nothing right ever goes right with this house ever right ever you guys know what happened with the water heater and all the other stuff that happened it just never goes right so and i'm like well we should be okay so it comes out to a t and yes i do have i made sure that i took video of this first of all because i am a vlogger no i'm not a vlogger what do you call me i'm a social media person like you're you, a content creator. i'm a content creator so i know that that's important so we'll get to that right. in a minute so i have plenty of video and plenty of pictures of this so it's like a little t and it goes into the ground and a handful of years ago they had replaced everything in the ground there uh and 
I thought they replaced all the PVC with uh, copper pipe or whatever, or whatever metal pipe that you replace it with, but apparently they didn't. So on this T going down, there's the shutoff to my house, right on, and there's, and there's the meter there. Right, right south of that shutoff is not my problem. That is the park's problem. That's the city's problem. North of that meter, that's, that's, is my problem where I have to call a plumber myself. I have to do it all right. myself. So I grab the pliers, I twist, nothing's happening. I'm like, <laughs> I've seen this before. I'm going to get a hammer. So, because hammer and plumbing go together, right? So I grab the oh, totally. I grab the faucet with the with the pliers, and I hammer the pliers. Boom, boom, pop, <laughs> and of course it pops underneath. It pops underneath the turnoff to the house, right? So I reach down, knowing very well, and water's coming out a million miles an hour. It's it's coming out so hard because it's all the pressure from the whole park here. All yep. of it's coming out of there, right? So it's 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 coming out to the point where it's like already like eroding. Is that what it's called? The the mud and the dirt and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's coming out. It's just flying out everywhere. I reach down. And I turn off the handle, and nothing happens because it's not even. It's like not even pretty much connected at this point. It's it's split. But then it's PVC pipe down there, which I'm like pretty sure that you're not allowed to have that anymore. So it's just <laughs> gushing out. So all I could do was lean into the house and yell for Crystal. Crystal, help! She comes out <laughs> and immediately she calls the park. And the dude at the park's like, well, you know, going to have to call the plumber and I'm going to have to turn the water. Could you speak like quicker, please? <laughs> right. What are you from the, what are you from the Midwest? Like, could you, you know, could you, <laughs> could you speak more than five words a minute? So he comes strolling on down there. Meanwhile, it's blowing water into where the, into where the electricity comes into the box and stuff to go into my house and stuff. So right. I'm trying to block it with like wood and I'm trying to block it with like, like a shovel, trying to redirect the water the other way. And it's just flooding my backyard. So the dude comes showing up with a cigarette hanging out his mouth and he looks, he's like, yep. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to call the plumber, but it's going to take him a while to get here because it's after nine o'clock at night and he's giving me the spiel. I'm like, okay, could you go ahead and put that plan into action? If you were to call me, I'm already on the phone with the plumber. I'm already be like, I'm right. going after this emergency. Get out here. This dude, he's cool, but like he's burnt out. Like, right. you know, he's done this job for 15, 25 years or something like that. He's burnt out. So he calls yeah. the plumber. And in the meantime, it's just flooding underneath my house. In that crawl space, Ugh. it's the steps are already jacked up anyway, so it's flooding all the steps. It's just going everywhere, right? So I found this piece of plywood and I shove the piece of plywood up against the spigot and I push real hard and I almost get it to stop, like because I got it lined up now because it's bent. So I got right. it to line out, so it's not gushing water everywhere. But I have to push with all my weight, all my weight. Jeez. I have to push, right? So I'm pushing, trying to keep this water stopped. And it's just leaking out everywhere. And then finally, 45 minutes to an hour later, the plumber shows up, right? And, like, <laughs> I can't do it no more. My legs are trembling. I'm trying to hold this. He looks at it. And he starts explaining to me all the stuff he has to do. I'm like, I don't care. Just get to the next part. Because the next phase is for the truck to drive up and down the street of the park and honk their horns, letting us know that the water's being shut off. That's how they do it. If I hear a series of honks outside, I know the water's about to go off. But right. I guess by law, after you honk the horn, you have to wait 10 minutes to turn it off. So they go, they do that, they come back over, I'm waiting and waiting, and finally they go and shut the water off, right? <laughs> so then I let the real plumbers get to it. So they start fixing the stuff, and meanwhile, people are coming out of their homes, people are blowing up the phones, trying to figure out how long this water's going to be off wide. They're mad. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It's like when, when the power goes out, everybody calls the power company, and you're like, there's a thunderstorm. That's why. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I just, all I could do was apologize to everybody. Like, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do this. I didn't realize it was PVC pipe that was running to my main, and it's small PVC. Right. It's like sprinkler. It's like three-quarter inch or something like that. It's not even like huge piping. Right. And so they had to then wait. After they turned the water off, they had to wait for it to like back flush out of the park all the way to where like it wasn't just gushing out now because it's coming through oh, back right. through the pipes. Then they sucked it all out with a with a vac and then they the guy fixed it pretty pretty fast and while he was there he uh, replaced the faucet for me. Um it took <laughs> it took both of them two of them to jump on the piece to try to get it loose when they were like wow, it shouldn't really? have been to come off. Yeah. So there was no way I was going to be able to do this in the first place. I was set well. up to, I was set up to fail. Yeah, it sure sounds like it. I'm glad they at least replaced that part for you. That was nice of them. Yeah, that was nice. I'm glad too. I'm glad too. It's it's there. So they replaced everything. It was probably about midnight before they were when they were about done. And oh my gosh, I felt so bad. Even now, it's been Ugh. a few days. I'm just like I've just it's just a, it's Dan and the series of unfortunate events. Yeah. So, what? And yeah. 
What did you learn, Dan? I learned that I'm not even that good at Super Mario Brothers. What makes me think <laughs> that I could be good at like IRL Plumber Brothers? Like I'm not. Right? So I am not touching anything on this house ever again. I don't care. I'm done. I don't care. I'm done. I'm out of my league. I'm out of my element. It's this is janky house and nothing standard on this house. I'm done. It was so crazy. Like I said, I have the video that I'll put in there into the notes, into the show notes. Right. And it was crazy. You know, you lived uh, it with me. I did. I was getting the videos and then I even went downstairs and showed them to Jamie and Jamie sent you a video message back of what you should do. And then as soon as he finished filming it, he goes, he probably doesn't have any of those tools. And I think at that point you sent me that message back that said, I don't own any of that stuff. No, I don't have the skill to <laughs> pay can, the bills. It, it was so funny when I showed him the video, I could see like the, the I don't know, desperation or the, the immediate concern of, I wish I could just go over there and fix it was in his face was like, I can fix that. I can do it. Like, I, you got to do this. And like, he knew, he knew automatically what to do, but he knew that there was no way he could help you. No, <laughs> no, I blew it. I blew it. And just, I can't even tell you what rushed through my body when I looked and knew that there was nothing that it was not going to be shut off for at least an hour. I could tell right. because there's nothing there, but not in my defense, but the park should have another shutoff. And that's what they were talking about. They're like, yeah, it's just yes. old, but there should be another shutoff at the street to shut off just the block. You should have, I guess where I'm supposed to have two shutoffs here. Like there's supposed to be one in the back corner plus the one that goes into the house. So I can turn off right. one for an emergency if the other one breaks and stuff. Um, it didn't cost me anything, even though I caused it because it happened below. It happened two right. inches below where it should have like been my problem. And I don't think it's up to code to have PVC pipes, so maybe that's why. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and the plumber dude comes out all the time, so he was like, oh, yeah. Like, he, like, knew. <laughs> He's so, like, yep, right, another so, one of these situations. <laughs> I don't really feel like, I don't really feel bad as a guy of, like, not knowing these skills. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't own these skills. I never had to do this stuff. I'm a computer mm -hmm. technology person. I am not a hands-on person. Mm -hmm. Uh, not everybody has those skills. Yeah, There's nothing, wrong. There's nothing me, wrong with that. Don't let me fix your pipes or your car. Right? <laughs> There's you know, nothing wrong. That's if, why there's people that are specialized in those things. If it cannot be done with a tutorial online that looks easy enough for me to do, then I shouldn't do it. But, I mean, in theory, it was easy. Just I was going to unscrew this little piece. I was going to put the little yep. thread tape on there, screw it right back on like a shower head, and whoa bam mm -hmm. whoa bam I'm a hero. But no, nope, yep. this hero was a zero and a soaking wet one at that. My shoes are soaked. My socks are soaked. My shorts are soaked. My ego Ugh. not soaked because I knew what I was getting myself into. Afterwards, right. though, I uh, I had to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going to eat. And I've been eating my feelings. Oh, my gosh. I got like the COVID-20. Uh, I've been eating. <laughs> I have been eating my feelings. So, no. yeah. So that was uh, that was not the funnest Friday night. And I'm so glad that we had moved antics to Saturday. Because, oh, and, right? and you know what, I think I am smart enough on that front to know that if I'm going to live stream or do anything with any sort of consequence, not to do an activity before, because there's an 80% chance that it's going right. to go wrong. Right. <sighs> yeah, yeah. You were, you made the joke about gaining the COVID-20. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. I took the dogs to the vet the other day. Yeah? Yeah. Memphis gained the COVID-5. <laughs> oh, and that's big for a dog. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, normally it's summertime, so she normally gains weight in the summertime. Most of my dogs do because we can't run. We can't pull the sled. We can't do all the things because it's too warm. You know, they get overheated. Right. But yeah, we, we went into the vet's office and she goes, oh, and I've been teasing Memphis and I've been calling her my little chunky monkey, but it's been kind of a joke, but kind of not because I could tell. And then, yeah, they weighed her. She normally weighs between 48 and 52 pounds. She has ever since she was full grown. And she was, uh, she weighed in at a hefty 58 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she's gained her COVID-5. So we have been trying to do, um, we've been trying to walk two miles every morning and two miles every evening as long as the weather allows. And when it's been really warm, we've been also swimming for at, at least five to ten minutes a day. Oh, so. she could be my new chunky buddy. Yeah, she's uh, she's in my little chunky monkey. Kira, yeah. on the other hand, is skinny as a twig and weighs a whole 42 pounds. <laughs> oh, I was trying to figure out a way to exercise without like, you know, Dan, just go for a walk in the evening. Not here. Yeah, I, clench not, my, yeah. I clench my purse every time I'm out in public on my side of town. Right. Right. You know, yeah, so, I wouldn't. I don't, know. I don't think that'd be safe for you. I definitely. No. I mean, the, your other options are like, well, all the gyms are closed, so that's not an option. Your other option is like get a treadmill, but then you gotta have this big contraption in your house that you're not gonna use all the time, and it just sits there and takes up space. 
Yeah, maybe I just and, won't drink like 400 beers a week and like not go to McDonald's like every day. I mean, that's an option. That doesn't sound like fun. It's but... like my comfort food. Like anytime I'm having a bad time, it's like, hurry up, get me a double cheeseburger and a Coke. Oh, I'm the same way. I am I am so the same way. I whenever, you know, something sad happens or I get stressed out about something, it's like, you know, that's I, the same and it's always McDonald's. It's always McDonald's. It's like, yeah. "Oh, I just want McDonald's." You know, I want my McDonald's french fries. You might hear my dogs barking in the background because somebody just pulled up in my driveway. Fair warning, audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they love the puppy stuff. But yeah, a way to go McDonald's. My comfort food. It's not even that good. Thanks but for my, us... my comfort food. I mean, it's my, right? ch- it's my choices. Well, yeah. I, but I do, still. I do want to go swimming, though. The The pool here at the park's closed. When the dude was here, he was talking when fixing the water. He was talking about how they try to open the pool for a little bit. But with all the COVID stuff and all the attention you have to pay, because like, apparently people are ra- rowdy at the swimming pool. It's not open. Right. I'm not the biggest public pool fan anyway. Like, yeah, I yeah. I don't want to do that really. So I, but I do miss, I do miss swimming. I do want to go swimming, especially after you watch Mark Rober's little thing on TikTok where he does the experiment that pool smell pool chlorine doesn't have a smell. Did you know this? No, I'm I gonna, did not. I am, do tell. I am. I'm going to ruin your pool experience and everybody's pool experience ever. Okay. So chlorine does not have a smell. You know how when you go to a hotel or you go to a pool, it has that pool smell? Right. The, that's not a thing. It's not a thing. Chlorine does not have a smell. What does have a smell is the reaction mm. that chlorine has when you mix it with urine. Yeah, but it smells that way out of the bucket. No one's peeing in the bucket, right? No, the pool supply. it doesn't. It doesn't smell that way out of the bucket. It really mm. doesn't. Interesting. Yeah, he did a little science experiment where he took two buckets and he put just chlorine, he put water and then five times the amount of chlorine that it should have needed into a bucket, and then he did it to the other bucket. But in the other bucket, he also added a small amount of pee. And the bucket, the bucket that just had the chlorine didn't smell like anything. And the bucket that had the pee, he said, smelled like every hotel pool and public pool and your friend's pool that you ever been to in your whole life okay so i have questions now because i have never <laughs> not um aside from the pool at vidcon that was a saltwater pool which was right really so weird. it didn't it, have that it didn't have that smell right right um every single pool i've ever been to smells like chlorine and that's kind of the yeah. charm of the pool that's how i know i'm swimming so here's yep. the thing i am open about me being a pool peer don't invite me to your pool because i will pee in your pool i will i will <laughs> We don't even have to go swimming, and I'll still pee in your pool. Like I will. <laughs> it is what I do. I'm. That's just who I am. And and now I'm starting to think. You know, all you all you people that put your nose up right now at that y'all are closet pool peers. <laughs> if all these pools are smelling like that, because if it's not me, yeah. it's not always me. I don't yeah. get in the pool with the intentions of peeing in the pool. Yes, I do. But I <laughs> I I think all you guys out there are are a bunch of pool peers. Uh, I'm I am not kidding. He did an experiment and then I saw somebody else that did the same thing with the same results. So mm, I don't know. I want If you want to test it, I mean if you want to test it, go to the store and get a chlorine tab and get two buckets and pee in a bucket and put the water in the chlorine in one and just chlorine and water in the other and see what happens. Yeah, Tell I me what just, the result. I could just see that when I walk into the pool supply place. Yeah, I need to get some chlorine. Uh, what kind of pool? Do I you mean, have? I oh. have I I have chlorine, uh, and I'm sure Jamie has buckets. I bet I could get him to do it. I, I don't have any. I don't have a pool. Well, what do you want some chlorine for? I, I just want to pee on it. <laughs> and then he just hands me over like a, like one of those sand dollar sized tablets of chlorine. I don't know. I, you know what? It I is? can perform the experiment. I mean, it's for science. Oh yeah, what, yeah, you, yeah. You, why don't you go grab a chunk of chlorine and pee on it right now? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna make Jamie do it. <laughs> but, He's got better aim. <laughs> but like, really? Because that's everybody. So that's I'm, everybody. I'm trying to come to the grip to the conclusion, or like, I'm trying to come to grips with the fact that, like, since I smelled it in every pool. Either this Mark Roberts, Mark Roberts, Mark Rober, Mark Rober, either he's lying or Mm. everybody's been lying to me about peeing in the pool. And I'm the only one brave enough to admit it. I think that's more realistic. Look it up. There's videos of it on YouTube where they do the experiment. There's, you know, I mean, of course, you can't smell it through the video, but there are videos where they explain it. Yeah. Chlorine does not smell. Oh, wow. That's amazing. (laughs) And you guys are all the... You guys are all disgusting, not for peeing in the pool, but for lying to me about it. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, oh. wow. Speaking of that, did you see that lady that was sitting by the pool while her kids were in the pool and that tree branch comes down? And yes. She, and she gets up and she starts running. And I know you guys have seen this. Um, I don't think I can, I'm not really sure that I can link that video in the podcast, but you guys can Google it. It's it's really trending right now. She's sitting like in her lounge chairs, you know, the ones that's yep. really hard to fold to the right area without having to completely collapse it and make it go down yes. flat so you can get in there. She's like sitting in one of those and her kids are playing and she kind of gets up and runs and this little branch falls she down. Didn't, she didn't even run though. She got up and walked away. I think she was going to refill her drink. Oh, I figure she just heard the crackling of the tree or something like that. No, she didn't she didn't even it wasn't even like a run. She just got up and walked. Yeah, and then this twig falls down. I'm like, whatever, it's a branch, ha ha ha. And then you see this other angle of it, and that thing was like huggable. It was like the hugest branch, and that would have killed yeah. her. Yeah, it easily would have killed her. It was like the whole top of a tree. It was so crazy. If she didn't hear the crackling, like, why did you get up, lady? It wasn't it just wasn't your time? <laughs> that's yep that that's uh that's some fate i mean that's it's crazy you know now you believe me when i when i told you when you're out here and i'm like listen you know there's ice on the trees those the trees could fall down the limbs on the trees could could literally fall down we had a um we had a a, i don't know if it was actually a tornado but it was tornado-esque weather that uh, came through just a couple of days ago and one of the campgrounds that jamie and i have been to many times up in onaway um, they posted some pictures, which I don't know if I sent them to you. If not, we can, I was going to say, we can, I'll send them, we can post them. But quite a few t- trees came down on people's campers during the storm. And these people were in their campers because it was pouring rain. Everybody was okay. But there was one picture of a camper that was completely annihilated, just completely crushed. Tree came down right on it. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. scary. When I was out there in October, it snowed on Halloween. And yep. then remember we went out jeeping like at two in the morning yep. or midnight. Or I don't remember how what late, how late it was. And you could see how bent the trees were with all the snows yeah. on it. And then remember we went up that one street and that tree was completely ripped. It was a huge tree. It had to have been there for 50, 40, 50, 60 years. It was completely yep. ripped out of that person's yard. And it was just, was it wasn't thrown in the street. Was it thrown in the street? Yeah, it was across the road. We drove around it. That's right. It was. So it's powerful. Here the trees are big and stuff, but I don't really have... I'm trying to look out my window here and see. I, there's not really anything that I think could damage me that's anywhere around here. Nothing substantial like that. Right. Now, we've had high winds rip trees out of our ground and stuff. That, you know, like your front yard tree and stuff like that, right. which is kind of big. But, yeah, looking around out here, there's some palm trees, but they're not too big. But I don't think I have to worry about I don't have to be like super chicken. I don't have to be like, the sky is falling. The sky <laughs> is falling. Unlike you guys. Do you um Do you remember the big, huge trees in front of my parents' house on the river? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The great big trees. And I said, those are, you know, jack pines or white pine, whatever they are. They're great. They're some of the biggest trees standing in Alpena are right in front of my parents' house. Right. And that's, wait, when you say the front, you mean the back by the water, right? Yeah, the back okay, by the so water. So back, back by where your mom has that rad rock. Yes. Okay. So do you remember looking up at the top of one of the trees and her talking about how the tree was dead at the very top? Yes, I could see that split. She told me about that. So during that storm, the not the most recent one, the one that happened like two days before that, my mom had called the insurance company and said, hey, we think we need somebody to come and take down the top of that tree. Because the top of it had already broken and hit their house, but it was not a huge piece, but it had it had broken and hit the house. They were worried that the bigger piece was going to come down and hit the house. So she's like, well, I have insurance. Maybe my homeowner's insurance will take care of it since a piece already did hit the house. And now there's this chance that that piece could come down and hit the house. So the insurance company was figuring out what exactly they could do. And then we had another storm and the top of that tree snapped off. Thankfully, because it's right outside my parents' bedroom. Mm -hmm. Um. Thankfully, the wind was blowing the right way and it landed in the neighbor's yard. And ironically, the neighbors were actually having one of their big trees taken down that the next day. So when the guy came to cut the tree down, he cut up all the pieces of the tree that fell in their yard from my mom and dad's I mean, house. That's crazy. There's a big, huge area back there where it fell, though. Like, that, that area in your yes. neighbor's yard was huge. And the only reason I yes. know is because these guys don't have fence there. And that's, nope. where, the, that's where the chickens were running. That's where the chickens was running. Dang, that's <laughs> scary. That's scary. The sky yeah. was falling. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to come visit you without a hard hat anymore. I mean, you know, yeah, you just never know. You never know. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, speaking of that, so did you hear about that Twitch girl that got struck by lightning when she was streaming? No. 
Oh my gosh. What? Yes, right? So, not too long ago, there was this girl, her name is Karma, I believe? Pro Gamer Karma was struck by lightning during live stream. So oh I'm like, I need to know more about this. And and this and I didn't know about this until I was just trying to look for stories today, like what was trending and stuff like that, right? And there right. is there is video, but hold on, it's not there's no camera video. So so I believe There's no camera video. No, uh it's only in game video. So she oh, was okay. playing I I think it's a twenty seven year old Jamie Bickford, aka Karma. Uh I'm trying to look for a pronoun. She uh she, okay, she, yeah, okay. So she was playing a Rocket League. Right? Okay. And and she does not have a webcam, but you can hear the audio, and you can hear the lightning. Boom! And she goes, ah! And she's screaming, and she's kind of crying. Really? And apparently it struck her house. It went through her controller. She sh- there is a picture of the top of the PlayStation 4 controller. I think that's what PlayStation they're on. And where, where you would charge it at is all melted there. It's all melted because she had it plugged in. But you could hear the lightning hit and her kind of screaming a little bit. Uh, as as she's got shocked a little bit because it went through the house and it you know it found its route to the PlayStation. That's insane. Yeah, so it, mel- I mean, it melted her it, controller. It's insane, but it doesn't surprise me because my buddy Dan, the one that uh, you know wanted to stack cars, mm-hmm. where his house sits way out in the middle of a the field, they their house used to get struck by lightning quite often, and it would always blow out their TV. Wow, wow, to yeah. what degree? Like, kaboom, or it just pops the capacitors and just goes Oh, off. no, like, blew out the TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is that is so crazy. I was so, you know, she's fine. I was so excited right. to see the video because I wanted to see somebody, like, get struck by lightning on a stream because I think that's crazy. But, yeah, no camera <laughs> video, but complete audio. And she, I mean, it's not faking it. And you can see the melted controller and stuff like that if that's you Google nuts. it. And I thought that was crazy. I, yeah, watch out. Mother Nature is, like, we're she done with us yeah she's uh yeah. she's got a vengeance she's yeah. coming for us yeah it's time to <sighs> just select all delete yeah definitely select all delete oh my, my uncle got struck by not struck by lightning he got struck lightning struck the ground right out in front of their house why him and my dad were they were kids and they were looking out the front door and my grandma was yelling at him my dad tells the story my grandma was yelling at him to get away from the door and lightning hit the ground and it knocked my uncle from the front door all the way to the back part of the house wow that's amazing yeah yeah that's amazing so, wow say jamie had that happen jamie was in a tree was in a tree house with a friend of his that got struck by lightning the tree got struck by lightning as they hit the ground and started to get away from the tree the tree got struck by lightning same thing it tossed both of them wow like, i don't even know what that, scary what that strength is like yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, man, that is so crazy. It, things are crazy, too. Wasn't your town on fire today, just today? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so I was on, I don't know what I was doing. I was on Facebook or something. Anyway, my Facebook messenger goes off, and it's a friend of mine that lives a town over. She goes, my scanner just went off, and it says John A. Lowes is on fire, fully engulfed. John A. Lowes is a restaurant. It's actually a saloon. Well, it used to be a saloon, but now it's like a restaurant and bar. It's one of the oldest buildings in Alpena, built in, I believe, 1889 or 1883. I don't remember which, but it is one of the oldest buildings in Alpena. Uh, used to, It was originally a saloon, so it was that old-time bar saloon way back when we were a lumber town, and all the guys would come in from cutting wood, and everybody would go to the, to the saloon, um, which is probably exactly what you're picturing with the, all the, the oh, fancy yeah. dressed girls and all that. The and swinging doors. Everybody's, and everybody's smoking their cigarettes and cigars and getting and, their beer. And, and somebody's playing, not the piano, but the piano. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh-huh. So anyway, um, this building, they they were set to open. I don't know if it was tonight or tomorrow. I guess they haven't been open since COVID shut them down, but they were set to reopen the dining room. They had just done a whole bunch of remodeling uh, before COVID happened. And she said the building was fully engulfed. And I'm like, holy cow. So I get on Facebook and I'm kind of looking. I'm like, all right, if the building's on fire, somebody in town's going to have a picture. And sure enough, within three seconds, there's a picture. Building's on fire. Well, that building is actually connected to Thunder Bay Theater. Like back in the day when they used to build buildings, a lot of people that have, that live in places with old downtowns know this. The buildings are all connected. Like, there's a wall in between them, but they're still right next to each other. They're touching. So normally what happens is when you have a fire in a downtown area, one building starts and the whole dang block burns down. Well, um, I went down there because, you know, I have an infatuation with fire because my grandpa was a Detroit fireman. So I went down there because I wanted to see if I could get 
not be in the way, but I still wanted to go down there and see if I could get a couple of pictures of, like, the firemen doing their thing, because, you know, you were there when Habitat for Humanity burned down, and I really like taking pictures of that stuff. Um, so I went down there, and I made sure to get a pic- couple pictures of the side of mm-hmm. Thunder Bay Theater, where it says Thunder Bay Theater. I, like, stood by the post office and uh, took some pictures, and I didn't cross any of the... I didn't, don't worry, guys, I didn't cross any of the lines. I almost asked, because I knew two of the police officers that were standing there. I'm like, I wonder if they would let me just get a little closer for, like, two shots and walk away. And I'm like, nope, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that person. So I didn't. I need a press pass. That's what I really need. Oh, yeah, a fire <laughs> press pass? That's how you do it? Just- no, I just want to press pass in general so I can go to all these events in Alpena and take pictures of them. Like I that I would love that. That would right. be so fun. Uh-huh. You know, like and then I would I would just give them to the news. You can have them. I just want to be the one to go there and get the shots. But uh yeah, I went down there and when I got down there, it was oh my gosh. You saw I sent you some pictures. It yeah, was I so did. bad. It was bad. The fire the fire was bl- or the smoke was just this black and brown and it smelled old like it, you could tell this was old dry wood that was on fire and the debris flying through the air was unreal i can't believe that they were letting people get as close as they were i still tried to stay back because i could see the stuff flying through the air at one point in time i went around the block cuz i wanted to see the other side of the building but the smoke was blowing that direction so i tried to walk a couple blocks up and even doing that, I could feel the water from the hose because the wind was blowing so hard. Like, it was it was crazy. Um, I stayed down there for like an hour, got a couple of pictures, talked to a lot of people. There were people crying, like just full-blown crying on the side of the street. Uh, everybody did get out of the buildings. We do know that. Um, there was only three people staying at the Thunder Bay Theater, because Thunder Bay Theater, up at the top, there's apartments where the core cast usually stays, but right now they haven't been doing any shows because of COVID, so thankfully they didn't have a whole building full of people. Oh, right. But, uh, and then the, the, the Visitors Bureau, the Convention and Visitors Bureau building is right across the alley from, uh, from Johnny Lau's, and I do know that, uh, Mary Beth from there, she was able to get out of that building. She said she was sitting at her desk. And all of a sudden, the whole building filled up with smoke. And she said she never forgot how to do things so quickly in her life. Like, she said she had taken her shoes off because she was there working in the office. She couldn't remember how to put her shoes on. She couldn't remember how to get the door unlocked. And she's standing inside this building that is filling up with smoke. She finally was able to get out of the building. And she said the same thing. As soon as she got outside, she just started shaking and crying. And Because the building next door was fully engulfed in flames. Right. uh, Old buildings go up quick. That's so thing. fast. You can't really that, stop that momentum. Mm-mm. And you could tell that the firemen were focusing. They had a few trucks focusing on where the actual fire was, but then the, you had a few trucks that were focusing on the theater building. When I left, I walked around the back side of the building, um, also because there was less people and less trucks and stuff back there. So I walked around the back side of the building to kind of just be out of the way, and there was actually a tr- a fire truck parked in the alley that I didn't know was even back there, and they were soaking the back part of the building, but you could see from that angle where the two buildings met, the roof of John A. Lau's collapsed while I was walking around the back of it, like you heard it go down, and of course you saw more fire come up. The side of Thunder Bay Theater when I left was on fire, so... I left. I didn't want to stay down there. I figure I'll go back down there later tonight when they have it all out and get some aftermath photos, either tonight or tomorrow, so that I can edit those. And I'll probably actually, what's what's crazy is I'll edit those photos and I'll send them to the fire department and I'll send them to John A. Laos and I'll send them to Thunder Bay Theater and they can do whatever they want with them. I sent Habitat Humanity the photos that I took of their place after I edited them as well. But uh, Yeah, it might help with insurance or whatnot. Well, it's not just that. I feel like, I don't know, it's a... If, for our town, which is such a small community, this is a historic moment for Alpena, as silly as it is. Like, it really is a historic moment when a building that has been here for so long is gone. And not only that, like, John A. Lau's was a haunted saloon. It has been on multiple ghost hunting movies. There was so many different stories behind the building. It was a, uh, I think it was on the register, historical register landmarks, whatever it is. And then the theater was a completely nonprofit. Uh, semi-professional theater, which was one of the only ones in northeastern Michigan, or northern Michigan, so there's that, and then, you know, it's just a community thing. People are going to remember this, and there was people bringing 
uh, cases of water for the firemen because it, it's warm today. It, it's almost 80 degrees and they're battling this fire and it's hot. And there was at least six trucks, I believe, there when I when I left. A lot of firemen. All the volunteer firemen were there. So there was people bringing food and people bringing... I mean, that's what happens when there's a fire in Alpena. Like, everybody wants to go see it, of course, because nothing ever happens here. But at the same time, it's not just that. People are there. Like, there was people shaking firemen's hands as they were walking by. And the sheriff was down there. And it becomes a pretty, uh, a pretty interesting spectacle. I don't know. It's interesting. But, um, I still smell like smoke. I didn't really realize it till a little while ago. I'm like... Oh, I actually smell like that fire. I should probably change my clothes and take a shower. But I yeah, don't. I spent I spent about an hour down there. I don't usually see fire. T- too many fires out here. The thing that burns down the most is yeah, about a quarter mile up the street from us is this farm place, and at the uh, like Van Dam Farms, I think. And you go there and you buy like hay bales and stuff like that. And every now and yeah. then, the hay bales all catch on fire. Yep. And wow, yep. that goes up quick. All of a sudden, you'll just look out the window and it'll be glowing outside, and then it's gone in you know in a half an hour. Or we get fields that burn down out here because we're dry and stuff like that. But I don't. You, yeah. It, our town's big enough that I don't really see the fires because it'll be on the other side of town. Right. It'll be far away. So I don't get that like you. Like when I was there with you, that one place burnt down. Yeah. And it was like such a small town mentality that like the whole town was there. Yep. That's pretty much what happens. Like when there's a when there's a fire, when it's a structure fire and it's fully engulfed, you will see a lot of people that will come and they will just stand and watch but it's not just that you know everybody was asking what can we do to help can we get you anything like that's the other side of it like i get the you know sometimes when people see a fire or they would see a car accident and they want to stop and see what's going on i feel like here there's a little bit of a difference where everybody's like feels so helpless what can i do to help what do you need do you need water do we need what can we do like what do we do so i feel like there was a little bit of that going on you know like there always is because there was there was people that were just bringing in cases of water somebody posted on facebook when i got home that they needed more. They're like, if you got a case of water and you want to drop it off, drop it off with the sheriff on the corner. They'll get it down to, you know, because they have the roads blocked off. You can't drive close to it. Yeah. But you could you could walk up closer to it. But they said, you know, whatever you got, they'll, they appreciate it. And I think every police officer in Alpino was blocking off every road to get to it. And I couldn't go to the P.O. box because that was what I had planned to do. Right. I can't get, I couldn't get there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, huh? Because it's right there. It was like right there across the street. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll have to try to go there tomorrow. So that's, I'm going to be right next to the building tomorrow morning. So my, you know, all my stuff in my P.O. box might smell like smoke tomorrow. Oh, that'd be interesting. I'm curious to know if it does. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm sure it does. The it, whole, it's so crazy. There's a restaurant directly across the street owned by the same guy. So there's a restaurant called JJ's Steak and Pizza House, which is across the street from John A. Lau's Saloon. John A. Lau's went up for sale a couple years ago because the guy was retiring, and the guy that owned the restaurant across the street named John Benson bought it. So he owned both restaurants. And the crazy thing was, is JJ's was getting smoked out. All of that smoke was coming right across the street and going straight into his building. So oh, that's no good. Not, yeah, not only is his one building that he just remodeled and was getting ready to reopen burning down, the other one is getting massive amounts of smoke damage, so they're not going to be able to be open tomorrow. Dang. And we decided that the... Delhi is far enough down on the opposite side that it's okay. Yeah, so the deli is up the road across, is across the river and up the road. But you could see the smoke from the deli. Like, it was close enough where you could see it. Right. Well, it's crazy. That's, you know, out with the old and with the new a little bit. I mean, a lot of these buildings are old and it might be better if they rebuild them. But tragic nonetheless. It's tragic because it's a historical building, but Thunder Bay Theater has been wanting to either buy a building or build a new building for a long time. They've been doing things here and there to make the theater better. Like, they put in a new sound system a couple years ago. They just did, like, $125,000 to revamp their entire lobby and open up. And they put a bunch of new front windows in and a new ticket booth and things like that. So there's definitely some money that got put into that building that... uh, is gone but they should have insurance and if they have insurance you know what maybe we'll get an amazing new theater out of it yeah hopefully at least nobody was hurt that's the good part that's yeah that's that's the same and uh, and hopefully the firemen are all okay because like i said i've got some pictures up there where they're up on that ladder and all of a sudden the wind shifts just a little bit and then you can't even see them they're just just you know disappeared in the smoke it's crazy so Oh, what a Hopefully crazy, everybody's okay. What a crazy podcast this has been. I know. 
Hello, 2020. Hello, 2020. Here, I got some. I got something fun. So recently, I've been watching these old training videos and a whole old home movies videos from the 80s. Mostly training videos. And oh my gosh, right. my YouTube algorithm on my Apple TV here is just all over the. It is all over the place. So I was been watching like these old 80s. No, no, no. It's probably early 90s to mid 90 videos of what it's like. Um, if, if you got hired at Blockbuster Video, if you got hired at Carl's Jr. or Hardee's for you guys. Uh, uh, and you take these training videos, you know, where you go sit in the basement and watch these videos for two yep. or three days and they train you. And I never had any of those type of jobs. I've always had jobs since I was 15, but I never had any like retail conventional job. Probably NASA was my only corporate job. The rest of it's always been from like private owned companies right so, small business yeah so they fascinate me so i've been watching a lot of training videos and 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 all the production value they put into these like cheesy videos from the early 90s and the mid 90s and 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 some of them are really cool some of them are not the ones from burger king are odd the ones from chuck e cheese is really odd because they have like pasquale there and they have all the other people yeah. and they're actually in their outfits in their uh-huh. like costumes trying to teach you how to play t- t- how to how to word selling pizza, how to, how many, you know, you only put 17 evenly spread out pepperonis on each delicious pizza and like three pickles only on a burger at McDonald's. That, yeah. See, and you've, you've worked retail, so you've probably seen it, these videos. So oh, yeah. now that I'm older, they're very fascinating to me. So I fall down these rabbit holes of people at Kmart. Oh my gosh. Trying to be like, this is how you sell somebody a product placement warranty. And it's just so crazy how they try to get you on board with the company's like, enthusiasm and the policies yes. and stuff like that and i don't know it's 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 crazy i mean you've lived it i have i worked at kmart i've seen the kmart videos i worked at mcdonald's so i have seen the mcdonald's videos and then i worked at a local grocery store so i've seen the videos that teach you how to bag groceries correctly yeah which yes. nobody knows how to do and no, like after working at a grocery store and learning you know don't do this and don't put your chemicals in here and you know make sure you bag this separately blah 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 blah, blah. here's how you stack things correctly in a paper bag nobody knows how to bag groceries nobody it drives does. me nuts nobody people does. always people always say to me you know why do you go through self checkout because i want to bag my own groceries that's why that's it i don't <laughs> i don't want my bread to be smushed no, I do not want my bread to be yes. smushed. I do not want you to put the Ajax next to, you know, my fresh fruit. Please don't. <laughs> right, right now. Yeah, don't put it next to the powdered sugar. I might get confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've been fun to watch. You know, Jess, with two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions <laughs> on a sesame seed bun, we can change the world. And it's like, yep. and as they go through the years, and McDonald's has the most of them. And they've had them since like yes. the 60s or so. You know, yeah. when it's like, here, you know, for a nickel, you can get a cheeseburger. And it's, and it's fascinating to me to watch the background the production value what they uh-huh. do and as it gets you know into the late 90s everybody's got like cosby sweaters on and like that yeah. weird funky look and they're just fascinating to me since i didn't live that part but i was always curious what was on these videos i got to watch the videos when the cures were in use at mcdonald's and you had the warming i i don't know if you remember this but you used to go into mcdonald's and everything had like you would pre-make everything and like it would slide down this little ramp so you'd have like five burgers five cheeseburgers right. It'd be you know, right however. behind the counter and you could see yes. them stacked you'd see the big macro the cheeseburger the hamburger row. yes yes okay yep. right. so when i first started working at mcdonald's our mcdonald's still had that system and they had the cure and they had all the things and there were so many we had to have made you know beforehand and stuff like that but we were transitioning away from that to the new system. So I got to watch the videos on how all that worked. And then when we got the new system, we had to watch all the new videos and how all the new stuff worked. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Some people put time into these really bad B movie videos. I mean, they're really, oh, yeah. they're really bad. Some of them are fast. Some of them are fascinating though. Like I'll be watching how people make the burgers and stuff. You don't even flip burgers at McDonald's. You can't even call yourself nope. a burger flipper. There's no flipping use, of the burger. Nope. Use a clamshell. It's a clamshell grill. Yep. And that's why the cheese is never melted on those things. So that's because they got rid of the cure. When they used to have a cure, which was basically like a super powerful microwave, mm-hmm. what would happen is you would make the burger, you toast the buns, and then you would make everything, and you would wrap it, and you would stick it in the cure. And every single thing had a different like code that you would put in. You know, quarter pounders or you know whatever was a different code. So it would go in there, and it would microwave it for literally a few seconds, and that's what would melt the cheese. Uh, okay, but they went okay. they went away from that system with the new system they have now and that the cheese is never melted because it's put on after right it's just a chunk of rubber so i just no no cheese please um the heat lamps were a thing back in the day as well yes yep 
Yes. Oh. So I've been. Did I've, you watch the thing that taught you how to salt the fries with the arches? No, I did not. I did not see the. I did not see the fry one. Explain. Yep. How do you salt French fries? At McDonald's, how? you you have to you salt them in an arch. So when you salt them, you shake it like a, in an M shape. One, two. Oh, one, okay. Two. Shunk, shunk. Oh, well, that metal thing with all those holes in there, and that salts yep. the fries. Yep. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Now I do have a great time watching these things for some reason. I don't know why. I think they're just like super cool. So then. Now my algorithm's full of this stuff, right? <laughs> and there's this kid that made this vlog just a couple years ago, right? And it says, my my opening routine at Subway. And it's a vlog. It's this kid. It's a vlogger. And he gets uh-huh. up He gets up in the morning and he shows you for pretty much a 40-minute straight video of him turning on the lights, going in there, pulling all the stuff out, draining the olives, going through the stuff, loading everything up, getting all the trays and stuff ready for Subway. And it's interesting how many stuff's already pre-packaged and stuff. And you have to just open it up, pour it in a bowl drain out the olive juice and then you throw it into the fridge until it's time to you know dish it out and stuff like that so i'm not the only one that must like this stuff because that video had a half a million views on it right so i'm like interested right i'm really interested and he's like i don't know corporate can't be happy with this video he's just in there with one hand on his phone trying to you know he was baking bread he was making cookies then he was showing the secret after the cookies come out you smack them on the ground so they get flat and, and right. so they look like the cookies are bigger and it was it was super interesting to me like i felt like i worked at subway for a day even though i have no desire to be a sandwich artist you know right you don't right. want me making your sandwich that's for sure i can't even change a spigot and so <laughs> so that had a half a million views i'm like what else does he have on here this guy's you know nerdy but like fascinating and i go to his channel he's got 11 12 videos or whatever of doing doing vlogs with like no views like that spike really that spike yeah and he has maybe a thousand subscribers on his youtube channel but for some reason half a million people loved that subway video just wow it's just the algorithm yes yep it's him with 40 minutes of opening his day at subway i watched all of it i watched every bit of it we went on we went on the break it's interesting because after you work at a fast food restaurant like a place you probably don't want to eat there anymore because the one person came in oh and he was there by himself like the whole morning shift was just him he had no other co-worker which seems unsafe to me but like at (laughs) like at 9 30 this other person comes in late he made a big deal about and showed the schedule. Like this person's like uh-huh. a half an hour late. I'm like, that can't be good for the owners that are going to watch this later. So right? this lady comes into work and he's like, I need to go get lunch somewhere. And he left to go get lunch. Like it's like, but you're at, so you the food's right there. <laughs> the food's, the food's there. Do you get free food at McDonald's? We did. Yeah. It depends on the franchise. Each franchise is, runs, it operates differently. So our franchise that I worked at, we got, if we worked a four-hour shift, we got what was called a small meal, which was basically like a cheeseburger or a ham. It was a four-piece nugget, a cheeseburger or a hamburger, a small fry, and a small drink. If you worked a eight-hour shift, or I think it was above six hours or something like that, you could get like a large size meal. So you could get like a, a Big Mac or a quarter pounder with cheese, a small fry, and a medium drink. So, But we did oh, okay. get free food. Depending on how long we worked, we did get free food. How long till you were sick of it? Well, I, ate it. I still eat at McDonald's today, but I also worked at our McDonald's and I, I still to this day know the managers there and I know how clean our McDonald's is. And I, as crazy as it is, besides Delhi, it is one of my favorite places to eat in town because I know how meticulous they are at our McDonald's. But I will say that is not every McDonald's because I worked at McDonald's in Arizona when I moved to Arizona. I worked at a McDonald's out there for two weeks. I could not stand it. It was so disgusting. I quit. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I get it, I get it. So, is there ever a time where, like, you, like, go to work and, like, I don't feel good today, and then just the smell of the food just is, like, just so bad? At the deli? No, at, like, McDonald's. Like, do you ever just walk in there and just be like, I cannot smell another Big Mac again? No, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I ever got to that point. I really don't. Jamie used to hate me coming home from there because I smelled like McDonald's. Oh, right, kind of like I how I used to smell like rubber from the bike shop. yeah. Yeah, so, like, there was times where I would come home and he would be like, oh my gosh, change your clothes, you smell like food. <laughs> you smell like a filet fish lady, beat it. Yeah, yeah, but, oh. no, not really, I, like I said, I, I, I'm a very, we talked about this early on, I'm a very comfort food type of person, and McDonald's is just a very familiar comfort food thing for me. I've been going to McDonald's since I was a child. My grandpa used to take me to McDonald's for breakfast in the morning, and we would get hotcakes and sausage, and he would drink his coffee, and then as I got a little bit older, it was my grandparents that always took me there. More than my parents. My grandparents took me to McDonald's. I'd get my Happy Meal and I'd get my chicken nuggets and my drink. And like, I don't know. It's just for me, 
it's just a comfort food thing. Yeah, me too. I had I was in the same mentality of the '90s when that's what it was. Their late '80s, early '90s. Uh-huh. It was comfort food. It was good times, great taste. It was McDonald's, and now look where you know it's ingrained in us. Yeah. You know, yeah. and not for the good. I mean, it's not good for us at all. We know it's not good for us, no. but no. Kinda but it's also like anything now. else. Uh, you're right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I already made the decision in my brain that that's what I want for dinner. <laughs> is it is it McDonald's or Taco Bell today? It's McDonald's because we keep talking about it. All right, maybe I will too. So anyway, so I've been loving these videos. <laughs> they might not be for everybody. I think everybody in the house here rolls their eyes when they catch me watching like Radio Shack employee handbook videos <laughs> and stuff like that. And then I stumbled across this video of this guy that's got like forty or fifty uh, cassettes regular cassettes and they were from all the years he worked at target and every like uh month or so target gets sent a new cassette and on there would be like bad kenny g the wave style music with right with commercials in between and at the end you're supposed to just discard them well he kept them all he just kept all of them. So he had this huge archive of like, it was like every 14 months or something like that, the Kmarts would get them during the 80s. And he would keep uh-huh. them and he was showing how worn out they are. And he was playing some of them and, and they were really interesting for me at Kmart. And then as the 90s <laughs> rolled around, they started coming out monthly with a little bit more hipper music. You could see how the, the, the trends have changed and stuff with the same commercial. And it was like WKMRT radio. Like they had this whole thing set up. Then it got to the point where they were doing weekly ones. So he would get in. So for like a year, there'd be 52 or 53 or whatever. I don't know how many weeks are there already. You're 52 weeks in the year. <laughs> hey, doesn't leap year yeah. give you another week? Oh, no, it just gives you another day. Uh, oh, so, yeah, totally. Totally gives you, no- <laughs> gives you another month, Dan. What are I you just, talking about? I just kidding. So, <laughs> I know. So uh, there was 52 of them. So those ones weren't as worn out. But to me, it was fascinating that this guy has got this big collection of these tapes that were just meant to be discarded. And at the time, there was about 1,800 Kmarts, you know, in existence. So right. they were making these cassettes every week for 1800 stores of just whatever new sales were out whatever new deals were out and there was these other rare cassettes that he had that were like on a loop that you would put like in cassette players and just put them around the store about like like product placements and stuff like that and for me it was just so cool because nobody should own this like it all should be right. in the dumpster somewhere gone right. you know from retail store history yeah but Why no, he's, he's, well, yeah, he's got his blue light special cassette and stuff like that. To me, for some odd reason, I have no idea why that is so fascinating to me. To me, to me, know? a bunch of people, I had like, a lot of views. It's in my algorithm. It's on my TV. Oh, uh, that's so funny. Yeah, so I've been, I've been watching, I've been watching a lot of that lately. <laughs> so if you guys are into that stuff, check it out. At least check out the Chuck E. Cheese's one because that one's a little creepy. Just think, if you ever have to go to work to one of those places, you could be like, oh, don't worry, I've already watched all of your training videos. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go get a job at GameStop, and I'll go in there, and they're going to be like, well, what, what do you have for training? It's like, well, I watched this video from 1986 trying to teach people <laughs> at the store um, how how to word video games to people. It was like how to sell Nintendos, how to sell Nintendo products and stuff. And it was right. trying to show people how to sell Nintendo products because video games were so new. There was one that was at the supermarket. It's like how to sell Crystal Pepsi to your customers at a supermarket. And it was this whole thing on Crystal <laughs> clear pepsi so it was so niche and so interesting i i might i'm good i i wanted to yesterday after you kind of started to tell me about it but i didn't yet but i will do it yeah and i've been following this down this rabbit hole for like a month or two like here and there it'll pop back up i'm like oh yeah i remember watching this thing i'll have to check it out Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right you want to wrap this up jess you got anything else to say before we get out of here uh yeah we should wrap it up because i'm sure i'm i'm itching to go back down there and see what the what the situation looks like now. That sounds like just an excuse <laughs> to get back to uh, McDonald's. <laughs> Sh- shut up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, everybody. We'll be live tomorrow on our YouTube channel, youtube.com. Today. Slash C- oh, today. It's youtube.com slash CC Mouse Podcast. That's right, because this is going up on Wednesday. That'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. Listen to us every Wednesday on your favorite music app. Interact with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon at CC Mouse Podcast. Rep our merch at ccmousepodcast.shop, and we'll see you guys next week. Same mouse time, same mouse podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yay, we did a thing. Yes. Now it's time to go eat a thing. <laughs>